So, well, I grew up in uh, 1980s Kolkata. Um, and I suppose uh, my strong distaste for uh, socialism and communism comes partly from the experience of watching how uh, Chief Minister Jyoti Basu and uh, the communists basically uh, destroyed uh, not just the economy of Kolkata and West Bengal, but, you know, the entire intellectual, cultural uh, sphere uh, to a point that uh, uh, Kolkata has no, never recovered from that shock. Um, and so, when I was born uh, in the early 70s, Kolkata was the most important economic hub uh, in India. Yeah. It was one of the most important uh, industrial hubs in Asia. And uh, within my, right in front of my eyes, um, it kind of fell apart. And I always say that, you know, Kolkata didn't die. It was murdered and I'm a witness to that murder. So that happened and that had a big impact on me. Our audience loved our conversation about Kolkata last time. And they're all asking more details on it. Like last time you mentioned the word Kolkata didn't die. It hmm. was murdered. Hmm. And our audience just latched onto it because... Hundreds of thousands of people from Kolkata replied, shared on comments that I am from Kolkata or I have visited Kolkata, stayed in Kolkata for 20 years and I can relate to it. It's getting murdered in front of my eyes, right? So just want to go back to the history of it, where it all started with maybe Chief Minister Jyoti Basu. Yeah. And in 1947, as you mentioned in the few interviews, it was the largest hub, the largest city across Asia, like after Japan, maybe. So, um, yeah, I mean, when I was born, as I mentioned, Kolkata was, uh, even in 1970, it was India's biggest city. It was the biggest commercial and industrial hub. Um, it was culturally, politically a very vibrant place. Uh, indeed, before independence, it was even more important because it, of course, was a capital till uh, 1912. Actually, effectively into the 1930s because even though the capital shifted, it continued to be the main hub. And it produced all these greats within a few generations. I mean, um, Vivekanand, um, uh, Sri Aurobindo, uh, Netaji, Rabindranath, Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore. And by the way, many of these people knew each other very well. So it's uh, so it's within a, a couple of generations and this huge... And by the way, there were huge industries. Bengal Bengalis, by the way, were famous as scientists. Uh, uh, as a businessman, the original Marwadi came. The originally Marwadi uh, success came from Kolkata, not from their original homeland in Raj, uh, Rajasthan. So the Birlas originally made their money there. So this was a real driver, and then it all fell apart. And this is important to understand because when one thing falls apart, which is let's say you decide that you know uh, you, you're going to for whatever socialist kind of reasons you're going you're going to wreck the economy be very clear that everything else gets wrecked as well. So there is no such thing as a, a vibrant um, cultural hub, which is not also an economic hub. So this is important because this is also in the context, you know, many people ask me, why do you do work in so many areas? Why are you working in history? Why are you building this ship? Why are you uh, also working on the, why don't you just focus on this? Yeah. They have completely misunderstood what we are trying to do. In the end, I'm trying to rebuild a civilization. I'm not building just an economy. The economy is a part of it. But the overall purpose is rebuilding the civilization. So building a highway and rebuilding the Ayodhya temple are a part of the same agenda. And they cannot be understood separately from each other. And by the way, all civilizations that go through a renaissance or a rebirth have this phenomena. The Europe, for example, you talked about it. Yes. Yeah. So if you look at the 13, late 1300s, 1400s, what happens in Europe, in northern Italy, not even in all of Europe, in small area, northern Italy, a whole small group of relatively small towns go through this explosion. Um, and you have Florence, for example, producing this amazing art. Venice produces this amazing art. But in fact, neither of those is actually, their, their real business is not art. It's actually, in the case of Florence, it's finance. Right, they're banking. They, what is their great invention? It is not uh, art. It is actually double entry bookkeeping. Uh, Venice's great success are maritime trade. It's the stock exchange. And so all the art is actually a sub uh, a thing that sort of happens on the side as a result of this. When you have wealth, these things are the side. No, I. that is precisely what I'm trying to tell you. That is the wrong way to think about it. What really is happening is an opening of mind, an opening of aspiration, 
which is manifesting in different ways. So the same people who were funding the art were also doing the banking and also do it, uh, sailing the shores. And by the way, this entire phenomenon that I just mentioned starts from Northern Italy, rapidly spreads. It goes to um, the, 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 it goes to the Netherlands, it goes to the uh, Britain, it goes to Spain. So the same people who are listening to um, Shakespeare write his plays and his first actual Shakespearean plays for the, done for the first time, the Elizabethan England, are also the people who sank the Armada. Huh? It's Francis Drake watch, must have watched those Shakespearean plays. He also is the guy who goes and circumnavigates uh, the world. It's the same people who set up the first East India Company. Uh, same thing is going on, meanwhile, in the Netherlands. So what I'm trying to say is, it is not surprising that Kolkata was the hub of everything. Because it's very often were the same people doing all these different things. They knew each other. So it's really a opening of mind that happened. And it's called the Bengal Renaissance in the same way as you talk about the European Renaissance. So when it went into decline, it was a closing of mind. And the closing of mind happened, didn't just happen in business and in commerce. It also happened in science at about the same time. It happened in culture. It happened in uh, ev every sphere of uh, human activity. So it is extraordinary that not only did, you know, the Birlas and all these people leave uh, Kolkata and set up shop in Mumbai and other places. It is also the case that Kolkata has never produced again somebody of the caliber of Satyajit Ray or Rabindranath Tagore or Swami Vivekanand or Netaji Subhash Bose or Sri Aurobindo or uh, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose or any number of other names I can give you. It just didn't produce anybody of that caliber. When once things began to unwind, everything unwound. And what caused, like, like why did people elect Jyoti Basu or the socialist government in the first place? So, you know, people elect all kinds of people for all yeah. kinds of reasons. Yes. Yeah. The question is, why did they re-elect him? Yeah. Because having elected him, it was quite obvious what he was doing. Yeah. yeah. Even I remember in his first term, which was, I think, 77 to whatever, 82 or whatever, yeah. the first term whenever he got elected, um, he already had carried out the Mauri Jhapi massacre. Yeah. He had already begun to shut down um, the, uh, the industry. businesses. Yeah. Uh, he already was mismanaging electricity supply so, so that, you know, I remember growing up uh, doing my homework essentially by lantern and candlelight. You know, people have this thing ki mere pitaji bahut garib the and then he would sit under, a, you know, would do his homework by kerosene lamp and all that. I also did uh, my homework by kerosene lamp, not because I came from a poor family, I came from a solidly middle class family, but because there was no electricity and this was before the days of when generators were... Uh, commonly available. So, it was a... After, the question is, why did they keep getting him back despite lack of performance? Yeah. You know, you can try out anybody once. Why do you keep... Re now, some part of it was, of course, electoral malpractice, uh, booth capturing was converted into a art form. But I would argue that even more important than that was a poverty of aspiration. If your society aspires that the highest form of life is a union leader or a, you know, uh, uh, an Adda intellectual, yeah. uh, what in Kolkata is called a Natel, uh, and, you know, that is your aspiration, that you are sitting around smoking and having, uh, uh, sipping your old monk and, uh, you know, passing judgment on the rest of the world rather than doing anything. And smoking throughout the day. At yeah, you can smoke. I personally have no problem with either of them, your, your health. <laughs> but point of the matter, that is the aspiration yeah. of the society. If Mrinal Sen movies are the aspiration yes. of your society, then do not complain that that is what you get. Yeah. 